I got rid of about 70% of our homeschool curriculum in one day, one day. But I'm gonna tell you what I did. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Mandy the Handmade Homeschooler and I did something crazy. <laughs> so as homeschool parents, sometimes, especially when we have multiple children, we have a tendency to collect things. And by things, I mean books, pencils, paper, all the things. Okay, so let me know how much curriculum do you have at your house and do you have any curriculum that you need to let go? make me feel better. Tell me somebody else out there is a curriculum hoarder. I was a curriculum hoarder. I am no longer a curriculum hoarder and I'm very proud of myself for making these decisions. Do you guys like my pumpkin mug? Isn't that cute? My mom got it for me. Okay, so 70%. Now I have to explain <laughs> how I had this many books. So I've been homeschooling since 2015, the 2015, 2016 school year is when we started. Now, <laughs> there was, I had nothing when we first started out, absolutely nothing. And it was one of those like things that I just did. I just started collecting books. That way I could look through them and figure out what I wanted. And basically this is me cleaning out from that period so it's been almost 10 years because we're in, we're going to go into 2025 here soon this is almost 10 years of me collecting books i had like those plastic storage tubs i had them stacked in multiple rooms of my house of curriculum and things that i just forgot that i even had and when I started on this decluttering journey over the last month or so, I, I've just been crazy with the decluttering. And I've made so much great progress on my house, but I saved the homeschool room for one of the last things to do because I knew getting rid of curriculum was gonna be hard for me. So I saved it until my decluttering muscles were built up a little bit more. So I dragged out all the boxes and thankfully my children helped me <laughs> they saw they saw how heavy those some of those boxes were I did not even realize how many I had so here were my rules for getting rid of curriculum if you need to do this you can borrow some of my rules this is how I made the decision if it was time to let that book go or if it was something that I should keep for later so the first big rule is, is this something that I can pass to my youngest child? Because if it's not, then it's an automatic out of the house type of item. So if the book is a textbook or a workbook for specifically high school, because my, my youngest is in eighth grade now, so I'm looking for basically grades nine through 12. That's all I need is grades nine through 12, unless it falls into one of the other categories here that I'll name in a minute. But basically, if it is not something my child can use for grades nine through 12, then it automatically gets put into the donation pile. There's no sense in me holding on to books that are meant for like second or third graders. I mean, really, there's not, especially if it's not one of the other things that I'm gonna show you here in a minute. Another rule, if it is something that has had an update, then it's time to let it go. Something in this category would be like old Abeka books. Abeka has been going through like this huge update with all of their books and my son, my youngest kind of fell in this category where like he was right at the beginning of that. He got the, like the way that he fell into their grades, he was in the grade that they were updating. So like they're upgrading one grade a year and he was in that grade and it was so annoying because sometimes we could get the new books and sometimes we couldn't. So. If it's something that's had like a major update and I can't get new workbooks for him or new test books for him, that needs to go into the donation pile. Apologia is another one that's been updating. We just got their brand new updated book. If it's something that's being updated and we're gonna have problems getting workbooks and things like that, donation pile it goes. The next rule is things I knew I wouldn't use. 
So if this is not on the path that my youngest child wants to take, then uh, there's no real sense in holding on to it. If it is, so he pretty much knows the career path that he wants to take and we kind of know where and what books we need to go with. We need to, we already have kind of like a little curriculum path um, honed out for him. So if this is not something that's really on that path and not something he's interested in and not something he has to take for graduation requirements, it can go. I don't need to keep that. My children are two very different kids and they have two very different paths. One is going one way and one is going like, an, you know, 180 degrees the opposite direction. So there's no sense in holding on to books that I know that we're not going to use for his path and that he has absolutely no interest in. The only exception to that rule is if it's a graduation requirement. If it is not something that they absolutely need as a graduation requirement and the youngest child has no interest in it, out the door. The next rule is if it's worn or torn up or if it like it, it, it's it's in need of TLC. I just don't want to deal with it. Like if it is, if it is, you know, a rough book, which some of them are, we had a lot of them that were like that, you know, just from either being in storage or the fact that I tend to buy a lot of used books on eBay. And a lot of times that didn't work out very well for me. I'm, I'm just going to be really honest. People lie about the condition of their books and things like that. And they don't show you everything in the pictures. And sometimes we would just get a book that, um, should have been recycled. It's just like falling apart at the seams, but there's nothing I can do about it. So um, a lot of times it's time to let those books go. <laughs> I've learned my lesson though, and now I know where to buy used books at. We have thankfully a local homeschool used curriculum shop. It's not really local, but it's, you know, it's, it's a haul out there, but I can call them and everything and see if they have what I need. And I know that they're not gonna have books that are in that condition. So I can do that. Now, one exception to all of these rules, just one exception, and this is what I was referencing earlier. There's one exception to the rule of decluttering. If it's something, I don't want to call it like an heirloom book, but like if it is something that I want to save for my grandchildren, like my kids are old enough to where they don't need the book anymore, but it's something that I want to save for their children, then I keep it. Now I have other keep rules too, but I think I might make an, an, another video totally dedicated to that. But this is my brand new shelf. My husband bought this new shelf. We have two of these now. We have one in our bedroom, which all of the books from the shelf in my bedroom that actually belonged in here are now in here. So there's like half my bookshelf that was in my bedroom was full of curriculum books just to let you know how much I had. Now this whole shelf is not curriculum. Actually only the first two shelves are curriculum and I have one box, just one box now in my closet. I had about five to eight boxes in the closet of varying sizes in this closet and then I had some more in my bedroom closet as well. I had books everywhere. You guys, it was it was maddening, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books. I was probably technically a library until recently. So the rest of the bookshelf, these are books that my children read. So these are readers, these are reference books, these are dictionaries, thesauruses, um, collector's item books. And then I have my shelf, of course, of generation curriculum that we have either used or we are not using yet that is going to be for my child who's gonna go into ninth grade next year. I have a bunch of books there for him. So yeah, I love this shelf. I got it on Amazon. It is a really good deal. It was under $200 when I got it. I can't tell you what the price is gonna be like right now because prices change and you know they go up and down all the time. But one thing I have been thinking about doing is after this is no longer a homeschool room after my kids graduate is actually putting more of these shelves and stacking them all around this room and just making this room like my little library. I don't know. I, I haven't decided yet if this is going to be a library, a craft room or my gym. I don't know. There's so many choices. Don't think though I did not ask for um, multiple shelves and a rolling ladder in this room because I totally did and my husband looked at me like I was nuts but that's it's like my dream right it's like my dream this shelf has 
or this bookcase has five shelves on it and they're very deep and they're tall. So even like our really tall books from Master Books fit in here, which is great. Um, we have like one of those animal books from Master Books and it's really, really tall. And we have some Answers in Genesis books that are really, really tall as well. These books fit in there. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, my youngest, because he loves animals, has tons of animal books, field guides, things like that. They are all there. My oldest has a bunch of art books. He is a budding artist and he has like half of one of these shelves is just full of art books of his, reference books, things like that. So it really helped to organize the room and I'm sure you guys are going to see shots of it in the background of my videos. So that's what this is. I love it. I do, I absolutely love it. So the first shelf up at the top is the curriculum that we're using. The second shelf is the generations books that we have and the bottom three are all reference books, guidebooks, um, maps and things like that and just books that my kids read. So we got rid of about 70% of the actual curriculum and I'm so proud of myself for making these decisions. It was hard, but I did it, I did it. All right, so don't forget down below in the comments, let me know how much curriculum do you have? Do you have curriculum from years past? Are you saving it for your kids? Are you like me and you just have boxes of it and like forgot that you had it? Tell me down in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and happy homeschooling.